Hey, 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 everybody. Woo, woo, woo. We're back into the workroom and the girlies are gathering around the mirror to wasp goodbye to Chara. All the girls recognising how Chara has grown throughout the competition is just so gorgeous. We love you, wasp. So, the final five all sit down and every one of them has a badge. And it's so gorgeous listening to Marmalade talk about her mum and Lavoie's dad. We get to hear about that. Like, such a good one. Just so cute. There's only one week left until it's the final four. And I am so excited to see how this week works out. It's week nine. And in they come. Kyron is on all fours like a wolf on the hunt. Arroar! Everyone congratulating Marmalade on finally getting the badge that she so richly deserves. Kyron leads a daily affirmation with a difference and no one falls for it. <laughs> Rue appears in the screen and it's with clowns and jugglers and this week as she comes in in her suit it's my favourite suit yet. This kind of gorgeous jungle print. It's glorious. The girls are edging closer and closer to the climax of 25 thousand pounds and this week's challenge is a comedy roast and it's really fun to see the girlies reactions of who is looking forward to it and who is straight away very clearly not looking forward to this this week as well the eliminated queens are going to be back with the clowns and the big tops and we also get a visit from past roasties a couple of potatoes <laughs> release is given the power of the order do, do, do. And what have we learned? What have we learned? We've learned that when you are given the power, you should be strategic. And Relisa makes the mistake of not doing that and leaving it to chance. <laughs> she had the opportunity to put herself in a really strong position to do whatever she wanted with. And she throws it away. I don't know what I would do in this situation because I hate doing anyone dirty. You know, I want to... I want to win through it being fair, but Rue seems to prefer it when you use the chance that Rue seems to prefer it when you use the chances that you're given to really put yourself in a better position. Kyron comes out first, then Lavoie, Lil, then Marmalade, and then Relisa. And she does make a choice to flip the order. Well, at least her coming out first. So she's saving herself from anyone else doing her jokes or even hearing anyone tell any jokes. And I get this. I understand it. You know, like, if you're good at this, then this can be a great spot for you to shine. If you can step out with ballsy confidence and good jokes, and then you can set the tone and you set the bar. I'm just not convinced that this is Release's forte. She pops Kyron after her, and then Lil, and then Lavoir, and then Marmalade. This has sort of switched out the point of doing the names in the hat, which weren't in a hat, and just thrown in the air. I don't know. The girls now get to work writing what they're going to say about each other, and of course, the eliminated girlies too. Relisa is making a choice about riffing on the spot, and by choice, I mean a choice. Marmalade's joke about Lavoie is more a statement of fact rather than a joke. And I'm really confused by it. Michael Maruli and Ella Day pop back in to say hello to the girls and to give them some advice on how to win the roast. Michael gives some really great advice about thinking that it's your comedy special. And Ella adds that you should fake it until you make it. So you you don't have to be super confident, you just have to fake that. And it's really interesting hearing the girls' strategies for the roast. I think Kyron is kind of right that as long as you've got the other girls laughing with you, then that's the best way. Genuinely, there's some really, really good advice from Ella about using drag as a shield and that superpower. You know, it separating it so that it's not personal, it's comedy. It's not really you saying it, it's the drag. It's the joke doing the work, not the person. 
Like I've done a few roasts in the past. The first one I did was dreadful and I learned very quickly. <laughs> it's always best when you allow the joke to do the work and the character to deliver it rather than the person, i.e. you. If it becomes you saying it, then it feels more personal. The girls are all getting ready in their clown drag. Some have gone for classic clownery like Lil and some have chosen Pennywise Scary. Kyron, <laughs> it's main stage time. Rue has borrowed Octavia's judge wig this week, which is nice, and she'll be holding court, of course. This silver dress is great. Michelle has come in a net that you would keep oranges in or something from Asta. How lovely. Alan is back in the jungle and he's in this animal print, which is really nice. And we've also got Siobhan McSweeney, who looks like she's who's fallen into a rose bush and brought it with her. All the eliminated queens are back and the clowns are being sent in. <laughs> Release her, starts strong, chatting to Alan. Mm, chatting him up and then suddenly the vibe shifts and we go from feeling safe and secure to oh I don't know what's doing like she's got some decent lines though and she follows on from her idea of the buffet really well that the others you know would be giving you salmonella and then it stops and it takes a turn left and it's not so much a roast as some kind of weird contemporary performance art piece I'm enjoying it, but it's not really a roast. We don't really get much roasting of many people at all. It's weird. <laughs> Kyron's next, and then introduces herself as Craggy Clevis. Or Crevis, even. And she's using this unnatural, craggy voice. And it's just not that many jokes are landing. It's a bit sort of silted, stilted. And then there are jokes, just there's there's just a bit too much space in between them and the character doesn't really add all that much to the jokes or the performance. It's sort of like an unnecessary layer that gets in the way of what she's actually saying. It's not that it's bad. It just lacks a bit of flow. Lil is up next. She's a clown with a Santa hat on. Who knows why? I don't. <laughs> she starts out by trying to make people kind of feel sorry for her. And the unfortunate thing is that that then sucks a bit of the energy out of what she's doing. I really enjoy the cute angina joke though. I think that's my level of comedy. Terrible dad joke. <laughs> it's really brave of her doing a joke about a dead dog. I would honestly probably just cry at that if I'm honest. What's really funny is Lil taking a run up for this joke about Kiki. Like she keeps running at it like it's a travelator and then having go, you like she's dropped back to the bottom again and then takes another run up. What I will say is though, her set has a proper end, unlike everybody else's with the deck collectors. Lavoie comes out swinging straight away. And this is why queens who do audience work like Lavoie are so good at this. Being ready for the back and forth with the audience is basically a roast anyway. And Lavoie is so ready for this. It's great. She's got everything lined up, ready to spit it out. And these, these skills, they just come from practice. You just have to do it. And she's like, got a semi-automatic out and she's just firing round after round after round after round and all of the shots they're not perfect but there's so many of them that it really doesn't matter it's just this brilliant barrage of one-liners it's great marmalade is up next and her first line gets a groan because it's so vicious and unfortunately this just continues. The jokes themselves are actually really good. They just lack a bit of heart and humanity. Roasting people well needs to sort of come from a place of love as a well. It has to be kind of friendly. You know, there's a line between roasting someone and just being me. And the more I watch these, the more I watch these, the less I think Michelle enjoys them. Like some of the first ones, eight years ago, she really laughed at herself. But as they've gone on, she seems, I don't know, less and less willing to do that. The having work comment 
as well seems to have really riled her. I mean, I don't know if she's had any work done, but I don't know many people of her age who haven't had, you know, a bit of Botox and filler here and there, just to, you know, keep things fresh. Um, and maybe she hasn't. But again, I don't know all that many people her age who look that great without having had a little bit of help. Um, the other four's faces, as well as marmalade finishes, are so funny to me because the only person smiling is Relisa. Everybody else is like, It's time for the runway, and Relisa is up first in the pink vinyl and clear matte ensemble. It's kind of like the thing that you get off Alton Towers. Like, she looks gorgeous, but it's what it is. Kyron's next in this sort of stegosaurus vinyl look. It's great. Red and black, I'm into it. Of course I am. Lil is next in this sort of gentleman preferred blonde. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Gimp edit. It's fabulous. I love it. Lavoie is wearing a vinyl catsuit, an actual vinyls. And it's so close to being great. I'm just not sure what's really off with it. Maybe the records needed to be integrated better or done in a stronger pattern or asymmetrical. I'm not really sure. There's just something that's missing. There's just something missing to really elevate the look. It doesn't look like they, it doesn't look like they go together. Does that make sense? It's more like two ideas that have been smushed together because they're both vinyl. Marmalade is up next, and this gold gramophone look is really smart. The amount of work and detail in this look is super, super impressive. And the draping is beautiful. I think Marmalade has consistently produced such strong looks the whole way through the competition. Really smart, really detailed, really beautiful. And this week, the critiques are pretty much exactly what we expect for everyone. There's nothing that they say that I don't really agree, disagree with, that I don't disagree with. <laughs> I agree with almost everything. <laughs> and it's wild to me. It's really wild to me that we're so close to the finale. And it could be anyone except for probably Lavoie in the bottom, who she just killed this challenge. I get that Kyron as well is frustrated this week. And that makes total sense. But you've delivered at such a high level for the whole competition. It's been so amazing. Give yourself a break, kid. Like, you're all knackered. The girls, I think generally, can all be really happy about how they did. Like, none of it was awful. Just some of it didn't land. But lots of it did. And it really is anyone's game at the minute for who's in the bottom, to be sure. But they've all done such a great job, this entire series, that I just sort of feel like whoever's leaving this week, they can hold their head up high, because they've absolutely killed it. Back on the runway. And Lavoie is this week's winner, and she gets her fourth badge. Now, FYI, we've all been here before, so we know it doesn't matter how many badges you've got, that does not dictate that you will be the winner. Kyron and Marmalade are safe and they make it to the finale, which leaves us with Lil and Relisa in the bottom. The lip sync is to Crazy What Love Can Do, which is a tune! Lil gives us a robot realness while Relisa, de while Relisa delivers pure sex kitten. She is so sexy, it's wild. Lil dropping her skirt also has such a gorgeous hourglass figure like it's amazing and then release her dropping into the box splits with those incredible long legs I, I don't know why but I was not expecting her to be able to do that and to do it so easily amazing release it is safe this week and so she makes it to the finale while Lil is sent home while Lil is sent home it's really great that we've got to see Lil and her kind of quiet and kooky personality shine on this series and I love that she breaks the lippy trying to write her leaving message. So, it's the finale of season six. And who are you voting for? Let me know in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Love you all. I did paint my nails. I hate my makeup. I've just done a critique with this makeup on my face. So, yeah, read me if you like. I don't care. Bye! <laughs>